Hey there kids, welcome to the final video of module four for grade five Eureka Math. And this is for lesson 33 homework. So hooray, we have made it. You know what made me really happy? Seeing the credits after this page. <laughs> ah, I don't know, module four is just kind of a bear. It's so, so long. I'm ready for module five for sure. So anyway, let's get into it. Um, you should know what you're doing. You should have already done your homework. You should always try to do the work on your own. Strain your brain a little bit. Think about it. Try to solve them. Attempt it. Put the numbers where you think they go. Choose the operations you think you need. Try it before checking it with the answer key so that you can figure out, okay, well, what do I know? What was I successful with? What am I not successful with? That's what this process is all about. It's you figuring out what you still need to learn so you can do this on your own in the future. All right, so a few word problems today. Um, oh, and the objective is to create story contexts for numerical expressions and tape diagrams and solve word problems. Basically, understand the stories, create a few stories, and see if you can put the numbers where they need to go. All right, Chase volunteers at an animal shelter after school, feeding and playing with the cats. If he can make five servings of cat food from a third of a kilogram of food, how much does one serving weigh? So quiet. Okay. Um, how much does one serving weigh? So what do we have that we're sharing evenly? Five servings of cat food is, um, is coming from this third. So you're starting with the third kilogram and you're sharing that evenly. That's division by five. Five is a whole number. It's five whole servings. So you're going to take this and this is a division a fraction division problem. When you have fractions as division, you get to keep the dividend, change the operation sign, multiply by the reciprocal, it's the opposite of what you have here, which gives you 1 15th of a kilogram for each serving. Okay, so you're done. That is so quick and easy if you set it up right. Okay, then if Chase wants to give this same serving size to each of 20 cats, how many kilograms of food will he need? So now that we've talked about a third of a kilogram of food uh, working for five servings, what if I want to repeat that? So yes, you can make tape diagrams for both of these, but we're just trying to figure out, well, what would we do with this? Uh, one fifteenth of a kilogram and this is what I have for one so remember back a few lessons ago and it was like put a box around your what you have and then put a circle around the scale factor the scale factor here is that we're going to increase it by 20 so it's 20 times the 115 so placement kind of matters when setting these up even though the commutative property allows us to be flexible with our numbers but this is really just 20 times the 1 15th kilogram. And it's already multiplication. There's no changing, flipping, or anything when you have multiplication. With multiplying in fractions, you go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Can you simplify here? Okay, can you simplify here? I could have simplified first. I can simplify here. I can also finish it out with an unsimplified answer. But I like to make things easier for myself. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show the equivalent fraction by simplifying here before I have to divide this by this. So if I divide both by five, because five is a number I can skip count by and get both 20 and 15. Five times four is 20 and five times three is 15. This is easier to solve than this is. Okay, there's more left over here and, and some kids will count wrong. So basically, this is our simplest form answer. Four thirds would be one and one third. And what are they asking for? How many kilograms of food will he need for 20 cats? Cats, cats with a K, cats, okay? All right, so there is your answer for number one. All right, topic number two. Anuk has four and 75 hundredths pounds of meat, or as the kids like to say, 4.75 pounds. She uses a quarter pound of meat to make one hamburger. 
How many hamburgers can Anouk make with the meat she has? So basically now we're switching from thinking about um, fractions, a third, and we've got the quarter of a pound and we already have a number in decimals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 4.75, which is the total amount for the dividend, and I'm gonna divide that by not a fraction, I'm gonna divide it by a decimal. So a quarter of a pound would be 25 hundredths or 0 0.25 as our uh, divisor. Now, when this is set up like this from a lesson or two ago, you could move the decimal out. We gotta get it out of the divisor. So what would we do? And remember this, we haven't done it in a couple of lessons. And you shouldn't have to do that anymore, but if you move the decimal out of the divisor, you're gonna get 475 divided by 25. And that's what we wanna do with the standard algorithm. Okay, so um, dividing by 25, I know that two 25s would give me 50, so I can only have one here. Subtract, I still have less than 25, even though 22 is a lot, bring down your five. Now when you had a huge amount over here, that is kind of a clue that uh, the next number is gonna be a really big one. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess nine. Nine times five is 45. 18 for that, 19, 20, 21, 22. And that gives us, hello Bob, uh, that gives us 19 with nothing left over. And what are we labeling it? Hamburgers, how many hamburgers? There you go, with the 4.75 pounds. Now at the bottom here, fix the book. Sometimes Anouk makes sliders. Each slider is half as much meat uh, as is used for a regular hamburger. So how many sliders could Anouk make with the same amount? Now, now here's something I want you to think about. If you have the same amount, well, we already figured out what twice as much, um, meat would give for these 19 hamburgers and then we cut it back in half, you can make twice as many sliders as hamburgers. There's really no other calculation here other than 19 times two because we can double the amount of food that we can make because she's only using half as much. Cut down the amount per item by half and you get twice as much. So we've already solved that, so just multiply by two and you've got 38 sliders. And that's a really easy question. Okay. And onward, there's the credits again. Oh, so giddy, giddy with the excitement. Okay. Ms. Geronimo has a $10 gift certificate to her local bakery. If she buys a slice of pie for $2.20 and uses the rest, of the gift certificate to buy chocolate macarons. Oh, yum. That cost 60 cents each. How many macarons can Ms. Geronimo buy? So we've got a couple steps here. What are you gonna do first? Hopefully you decided to use your $10, write it with the tenths and hundredths. So $10 has the decimal here, but because she's buying the slice of pie that has a number in the tenths place, you may as well just make it look like standard American money and uh, subtract your $2.20 for the single slice of pie. We use subtraction when we only have like one thing that we're taking away. It's not repeated subtraction, so that would be division, but this is just a one-time thing. So $10 minus $2.20 is what we have to do first. Then we have to use what we get from that and we have to share it evenly or divide by 60 cent chunks because that's gonna tell us how many cookies. So this is your expression that you should set up and then we can start our procedure. So basically, gotta do with the subtraction. I'm just not gonna rewrite it, I'm doing it right here. And we know that that's gonna be um, if you want to do the subtraction, you can, or you just count up the difference, $7.80 uh, for the money that's left after the pie, 
and she can now split this and buy the macarons for 60 cents each. So take your $7.80, let's do this here and set it up like that. Now this is gonna all be money, money left over and money for each and then show what it would look like in your fraction. Now remember, I'm not gonna do the times the 10 tenths or 100 hundredths for all of these. You should know how to do it. We're gonna take this out by two and take that out by two. Anything you do, you've got to do to the top and the bottom at the same rate. So now you have a simple, pretty simple division problem. 780 divided by 60, and it's all in the ones without any decimals. So 78 divided by 60 is one. And bring down, and then six and 18. Hopefully that looks compatible to you. You should know your facts. Six times three is 18, so three times 60 is 180. And so she can buy 13 macaroons, M-A-C-A-R-O-O-N-S, with the leftover money. I think this is enough, 13 macaroons. Okay, now, uh-oh, she changed her mind. She changes her mind and instead buys a loaf of bread for $4.60, that's your one item, and uses the rest to buy cookies that cost one and a half times as much as the macaroons. How many cookies can she buy? So. We still have this one time subtraction and then we have a different cost for the cookies. So the important thing here is that we still have $10. We're still gonna use our um, dimes and pennies. We're, we have to take away $4.60 this time first. But we're gonna divide by a different number. It's gonna be one and a half times the macaroons. So the macaroons are 60. So if you think about it this way, if the macaroons are 60 and the new cookies are one and a half, let's say you have your two, what's a half look like? Well, it's about like that. If the new cookie has 60 here, what's half of 60? So half of 60 would be 30 and that's what this is. So if it's 30 and 30 and 30, then the total cost of the new cookies is 90 cents. So that's one way you can do it with a picture. You can do a fraction of a number and just get it that way. But anyway, what you need to have is the 90 cents over here um, as our single amount that we're gonna divide by. So another subtraction problem, $10 minus 460. And uh, subtracting, and again, if you need to do your standard algorithm, uh, go ahead and do that. This is gonna become the nine and the 10 and the four. And you end up with, label it money, $5.40, which you will now divide by the 90, whoops, forgot my zero, which looks like 5.40 over 0 0.90. Again, moving that decimal out, multiply by 100 hundredths, and you get 90 into 540. Um, now this one sometimes on, uh, let's say, let me quickly show you over here. 540 divided by 90. Before you do the long division, because I didn't do it up here and I was thinking about it, um, what if I was to divide both of these by 10 and just take off that little extra zero, what would the answer be? It's gonna be the same here as it is here because I kept the ratio the same. It's gonna be six. And if I multiply six times 90, I get 540. And if I multiply 50, I'm sorry, divide 54 by nine, I will get six. So you can keep it simple or you can maybe have it be a little bit more complicated. You're still gonna get the same answer. So she can buy six cookies with the money left over if she changes her mind and buys the loaf of bread. Okay, now um, the last two questions, I will help you a little bit, but I'm not gonna write the questions for you. You have to create a story context. Now the context is you're gonna write the words and you're gonna make up what types of items you're talking about, but I can give you some suggestions of things that could happen here. 
Um, so, for example, um, this is our first number, and from that we're going to subtract. So kind of like we did up here, you've got something like five and a fourth maybe pounds of flour that you're going to bake with, and you use two and an eighth pounds of flour in one recipe. So you have some that's left, and you decide to bake four types of cookies. That's what's happening here. So you have a one-time usage, and then you're going to take what's left of this, and you're going to divide it by four to make four different things. So the question then is, how much of whatever you had originally, say pounds of flour, would be in each batch of whatever you decide to label the four? I hope you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> okay? So again, this is the total amount of what you have. You're going to subtract from it one time. After you've subtracted from it, you've got your answer to that subtraction problem. But you're going to take that answer and you're going to divide it into four pieces so that whatever you have left is going to be shared evenly into four. And so you can call it, I mean, like baking is a great example that just works out really well. You can do, um, you know, gallons of water for the pets. You can do, you know, whatever. Anyway, like I said, I'm not super creative with making up the problems, but I know what you should do with the numbers. Um, you're on your own for the story uh, and then write that all. It doesn't actually say you have to solve it, though. Like, you just want to be able to ask the right question. And the question would be how much of whatever you decide, the label, is going to be in each of the four blah blahs, whatever. Okay. Anyway, this one um, is, okay, we've got the four times this. This is what you end up, you start with, okay, because we have to do the division first. So this is your starting point. Um, let's say you've got gallons of juice or something like that. That would probably work. And then you're going to, say, pour it um, into cups that have this much per cup. Um, maybe you want to have, like, four varieties of that or something. But that's the type of thing you're going to do. You're going to have this total amount, like liters or gallons or whatever, divided into um, this size cup, and then you're going to have four times that, oh, the lights, of course, um, four times that amount would be the answer. Okay, and so that's where you're going with that one. Again, make up your own problems, your own words, but that's the, the context. And then set up the question uh, with, like, how much juice should they buy if they want four times that amount? Um, okay, and then the final one, a couple different steps here. So you've got six of something, and again, you decide. You decide your label. Uh, gallons of water or juice or uh, pounds of flour or something like that. Baking is a, is a fun and easy way to uh, solve these. So let's say you've got your six gallons of water, okay? And you're going you're gonna to share it evenly between four types of plants, perhaps. Now, for one of those types of plants, you've got maybe a variety of three different types. Like tomatoes are great because you've got like heirloom tomatoes and you've got ace tomatoes and you've got the big beef tomatoes and just all kinds of different varieties. So break it up into three types. And then you're asking about two thirds of one fourth of six. And so that's where the question is gonna be asked is about this, okay? two of the three of the one-fourth of six. So you have to break it down. It's going to be a two-step question, and that's how you do that. And it's, again, you write the story. It doesn't ask you to get the answer. It just says create the context and ask the right questions. And that is it for Lesson 33, and I hope to see you on another video. If you click subscribe, you will see when I upload videos. So come back again and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.